than the economy, cheesier than Velveeta, and grosser than, uh, gross. Just in time for Halloween and back by popular demand, it's chill. The chiller theater you loved as a kid. The amazingly real special effects and the creepy hand that scared the poo out of you are back with a super deadly, mega scary, ultra attacking terror tarantula. You make it sound so, so creepy. Chiller Theater, October 25th on the CW11. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider who sat down beside her and frightened Little Miss Muffet away. Tarantula on Chiller Theater on CW11. Folks, get up. Can't get a day's sleep here in this place. Oh. Well, oh, oh, oh. Well, I, I have to introduce myself after all these years. It's Zachary here. Used to show the horror movies late at night, you know, and have a lot of fun. <laughs> I feel privileged to be back here after all these years. Really. I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> I haven't been serious too much during my life, but I am now. And I want to tell you, it's a really scary movie tonight called Tarantula. A really big bug. Biggest bug you ever saw. And now sit back and hold hands and behave yourselves. Here we go. Tarantula, tarantula. <laughs> Circumstances were to magnify one of them in size and strength, took it out of its primitive world and turned it loose in ours. Then expect something that's fiercer, more cruel and deadly than anything that ever walked the earth. Even science was stunned. The new atomic miracle should have been mankind's greatest boon. Instead, when such power to cause phenomenal growth proved dangerously unstable, man was confronted with his most shocking blunder. The isotope triggered our nutrient into a nightmare. A blunder that transformed a tiny insect into the hundred-foot spider that was now ravaging the panic-stricken countryside. Theater debuted in 1961 here on PIX, showing classic horror movies. And in 1963, it included an on-air host, moi, Zachary, the cool ghoul. We'll be right back with more Chiller Theater. Enjoying Chiller Theater on WPX Channel 11. Here's an interesting tidbit in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. The opening song, Science Fiction, double feature references Tarantula with this line. I knew Leo G. Carroll was over a barrel when the tarantula took to the hills. Now back to Chiller Theater.
Among the monster movie craze of the 50s, there was a subsect of films specifically focused on giant insects, a fad formally kicked off by the critical and financial success of Warner Brothers' Them, a film about ants enlarged by radiation. Seeking the same success, rival studio Universal sought out to make their own giant bug movie, one specifically to capitalize on the almost universal fear of spiders. The studio brought in many of their most talented craftsmen to make the film, most notably Jack Arnold, a director who had proven himself already with films such as It Came From Outer Space and Creature From the Black Lagoon. All of this culminated with the release of Tarantula in 1955, a film often considered one of the better giant insect entries to come from this era. You think that was lightning we saw over to the west? If it was, it's the first time I've ever seen lightning throw off sparks. When a man with strange deformities is found dead in the Arizona desert, Dr. Matt Hastings is brought in by the local sheriff to examine the body, only to have his inquiries stifled by the deceased man's colleague, Professor Gerald Deemer, who insists that the man died of acromegaly. In actuality, the doctor has been secretly working on a super nutrient in an attempt to solve world hunger, an unintended side effect of which is the sudden rapid growth in size of the test subjects. When Deemer is suddenly attacked by his lab assistant, the lab catches fire setting free one of the test animals, a tarantula, already the size of a dog and growing fast. Soon people and cattle alike begin disappearing, their remains stripped to the bone, prompting Dr. Hastings and local law enforcement to investigate just what could be causing these strange and disturbing events. <laughs> Tarantula has one of the most intriguing opening scenes in a giant monster movie, showing a clearly deformed man wandering the desert in his pajamas. It's not the sort of image you expect to see, and sets the stage for what would end up being a different sort of creature feature than was more common at the time. For one, the film bucks the trend of having the monster be born of atomic testing, though it is still the result of human scientific hubris. The film also plays lightly with body horror elements, which, along with the eerily empty desert location, slow burn plot, and the fact that the titular monster is a giant spider gives the film more of an explicit horror vibe than you might expect. Something I forgot to tell you but you already found out. It's in black and white. <laughs> Just like the old days, eh? <laughs> but we'll be back in a few minutes for more of the film. In the meantime, we have very colorful commercials. <laughs> this is Alice Cooper, <laughs> master of mirth, yeah. phantom of fright, with a face like that, and monster of rock. That's true, Hyman. Join me on Halloween for the Monstrous Monster Mash Marathon, a fantastic all-day resurrection of the most frightful sitcom in television history, The Monsters. What I'm dying to know is when. The Monstrous Monster Mash Marathon. With Alice Cooper, this Halloween, starting at 4 on WGN America. Everyone enjoying themselves here? Yes, Port Boy, how about a little duet here? How about a little, uh, little bash your little head in, hey? Let's try that here. Oh, bash my little head in, my head in, my head in. Bash my little head in and say you'll be mine. As was commonly the case with its competitors, the human cast of Tarantula plays second fiddle to the monster, which, aside from the occasional close-up shot, is mostly brought to life on screen by a real tarantula, as opposed to puppetry or stop-motion animation, and the result is surprisingly good. The optical effects used to enlarge and superimpose it over real footage works really well, especially in black and white, hiding any effects deficiencies that might have been more obvious in color. This was revolutionary effects work back in the day, and are very convincing for the time. An unfortunate side effect, however, is that the tarantula is never shown moving at anything beyond a slow pace, which does make it feel less threatening given how fast spiders actually are. This is a roundabout way of saying that maybe the film could have used some of Ray Harryhausen's stop motion. <laughs> The characters in Tarantula are fairly standard genre archetypes, likable and interesting enough, but not especially noteworthy either. John Ager brings charm and charisma to the screen as Dr. Matt Hastings, as does Mara Corday as Stephanie Clayton, a biology graduate who arrives to assist the professor with his experiments. As expected, there is a romance between the two, but both actors have good enough on-screen chemistry that it feels fairly organic and never detracts or slows down the story. The most memorable performance comes from that of Leo Carroll as Professor 
Professor Gerald Deemer, a scientist willing to go to terrible lengths to complete his work. His performance is the most theatrical, but he never steps over the line into outright caricature, and the result is a character that is both sinister and sympathetic. Yes. Well, I did. I asked him to see a doctor, but he won't do it. <laughs> Tarantula's biggest flaw is its pacing. The film takes a very long time to get going, which for the most part is good and works well to build up a sense of inevitable dread. The problem, however, is that it builds up to a rushed conclusion that doesn't satisfy on either an emotional or visceral level. Just as the film feels like it's entering an action-packed final act, it ends very abruptly, dispensing with all the tension that had been built up to that point. It just feels like the film could have gone on for another 10 minutes, like it's missing that extra effort in its final act that would have pushed it into becoming something truly exceptional. Did you know that the spider used in the movie Tarantula was real? That's right, they had air jets they used to make it move around. <laughs> we'll be right back with more Chiller Theater. Tonight on the News at 10, Isaiah Thomas says that wasn't him rushed to the hospital with an overdose. Police in Westchester calling the former Knicks coach a liar. I just want the Chicago Police Department to quit harassing my family. A mother defends her son against suspicions he killed the mother and brother of Oscar-winning actress Jennifer Hudson. Caught on tape, a man trying to escape from the back of a police car. Cops looking for a bank robber they say doesn't bother with a disguise. And Olympic swimmer Cullen Jones shares his winning wave. for some tarantula trivia. Many assume that the tarantula can kill people. The truth is that their bite is no more harmful than a bee sting. But in the case of the movie Tarantula, so not the case. Back to the show. Sergeant, tell them to load up with napalm rockets, anything they've got. In the end, Tarantula is a decidedly middle-of-the-road monster movie, good in many ways but hampered by a third act that seriously misses the mark. It's well-paced and mysterious, the characters are decent, and the slight emphasis on body horror adds a unique horrific layer to the giant monster story structure. It's just too bad it all amounts to a dud of a conclusion. Still, it's worth checking out at least once. Just keep your expectations low, and you might come out pleasantly surprised. For more reviews and opinions on all things kaiju, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths. See this guy? Although he's uncredited in this movie, he went on to become one of the biggest, most respected actors of our time. Guess you can guess who he is, huh? Well, we'll give you a hint. Do you feel lucky? Find out who he is after the break. Are you digging Chiller Theater? Tell us why and share your favorite WPIX memories now at WPIX.com. Okay, now, do you feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? That uncredited actor, that's the fighter pilot in uh, Tarantula, is none other than the Clint Eastwood we learned a lot of. He's only 25 here, but he later on went on to be a star of both TV and film, and an Academy Award-winning director, too. Now catch him in the scene coming up in Tarantula. Dump them all. Wasn't, wasn't that exciting? <laughs> I must say, they did a great job with the with the, the, the big bug, you know, walking around. Looked like he was really doing it. I, I think you got to give the guys credit for that out there in Hollywood. Well, well, this is uh, Zachary here saying bye-bye-bye. Uh, Hope we meet again, you know. Uh, I'm not getting any younger. Bye-bye, whatever you are.